Hello everybody. So today's video, we will be talking about CMOS. So a CMOS basically is a, well it stands for complementary metal oxide semiconductor. So it's like a logical transistor that is used to perform logical functions. And the CMOS is essentially divided into two main parts. And these two main parts are simply two types of MOSFET transistors. So the first one here is a PMOS. The MOS stands for MOSFET and the P essentially stands for hole concentrated. And that hole is basically this hole right here. And the basic function of this uh, PMOS transistor is that whenever you input something, it's going to give us the opposite result. So in simple terms, what we have is uh, input with a low and a high, and that low and the high get represent uh, binary numbers. So low represents 0, and the high represents 1. And for this PMOS, when we input something low, it's going to give us the opposite result, which is high. Respectively, if we have an input that is high, then the output is going to be low. And that's how it goes for a PMOS. And that's our first MOSFET transistor that covers half of our CMOS. The other half is called an NMOS, and the NMOS is basically just the opposite of what a PMOS is, and an NMOS is electron concentrated, so it doesn't have that hole. And the following results, when we input something low, we're going to get the same value. So if we have uh, the input, which is low, the output is going to, our output is going to be high. If our input is high, then our output is going to be high as well. Well, sorry, my bad. Um, if our input is low, I'm sorry. If the input is low, then the output is going to be low as well. Therefore, if the input is high, the output is going to give us high because for an NMOS transistor, we're going to get the value of our output, whatever our input value is. So I'm sorry if I labeled this first as high. And that's it for what a uh, CMOS is. And if we combined our PMOS and our NMOS together, this is how it's going to look like. So this right here would be our PMOS. And here would be our NMOS. And in simple terms, if we combine these two together and we have our voltage source connected to the source of our PMOS and the ground connected to our drain of the or source of the NMOS we're going to have an inverter. And the basic fundamental device of a CMOS is an inverter. And also, a PMOS is part of the n-type substrate. And the NMOS is part of the p-type substrate. 
In addition, if you want to clarify and state that this is an inverter, well, let's test out our input. So let's say that uh, we, what we do know about an inverter is that whenever we have, when we input something, it's going to give us the opposite effect. So for a PMOS and an NMOS together, if we stick them together and we have, uh, if they share the same input, this is going to, what it's going to be like. So let's say that we have an input and we uh, set it as low. Once it's low, the PMOS is going to give us uh, the output as uh, high. So when it's high, the transistor is closed, the transistor is turned on, and the voltage travels across the PMOS transistor to the output. For the NMOS, the input is uh, low, then the NMOS, the transistor for that, is going to be open. It's turned off, so it's going to be opened, so the ground does not travel to the output, therefore the output is going to give us high or uh, the magnitude of what the voltage is. Now if the input is uh, high, PMOS will be turned off because uh, it gives us the opposite effect, and then the NMOS is going to be turned on, so it will be closed, and the ground uh, the magnitude of the voltage in the ground, which is uh, zero, will travel to the output, so the output is going to be low. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to draw the output table for this, just so you guys would be able to uh, recap of what I just said for the last minute and a half. So our input right here, zero and one, and our output will be 1 and 0. And this right here is what an inverter is. And this inverter is basically formed by having a PMOS and an NMOS formed together. And this thing creates what our CMOS is. So that's how CMOS operates. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the near future. So you guys checked out my CMOS video. Now I highly recommend you guys to check out the box below, which is a practical example on where we use CMOS to design a function.